what we discuss tonight is what's worse to shame somebody to embarrass someone to cause them shame or to cause someone pain shame versus pain we'll see there'll be two different gemaras in, in a pairing contradiction and we'll try to reconcile so we need some background information first so we all know there are 613 mitzvahs and usually we assume yarvor v'al yarog there's a mitzvah to live v'chai bahem and better to desecrate one Shabbos so we could keep many more and it makes sense better someone's sick instead of letting them die desecrate the Shabbos if you're not really desecrating but it's okay to in fact it's a mitzvah that you're able to keep many more that's very logical however what's not logical at first glance is there are three commandments that we say Yarog the Yav are better to die than to violate these Averis and they are the big three as they're known Giloy Arayis illicit relations Avodah Zara idol worship and Shvichas Damim and murder so for those three things better to die our Kiddush Hashem than to have the sin of those on the Neshama and as Mepharshim explained what do those three represent we discussed the two categories commandments but Adam Lamakom and commands but Adam Chavero. so when we think of mitzvahs but Adam Chavero, the worst possible sin one can do is there's cursing someone there's hitting someone but at the end of the line is murdering someone there's no bringing them back so that's the end of the line in a category of Adam Chavero. better to die Al Kiddush Hashem to have the stain of murder on your soul and similarly what's the classic Ben Adam Lamakom is serving God Anochi Hashem Olakecha worshipping idols you've gone too far better to go Al Kiddush Hashem than to have the sin of that sin on, on the sin the stain of that sin on your neshama but what is Gila Arayis what category is at the end of line end of line so the Vilna Gaon and others explained there are really three categories Al Shoja Dvarim Olam Omed Al Avoda so the different things the world stands on and these are these three categories so the Vilna Gaon says but Adam we Atzmo is the third category between you and yourself your potential so one violates Gila Arayis it's like killing yourself you're basically hurting yourself so those are the big three for the three things you give up your life for and also as well it happens to be three of the seven mitzvahs B'nai Noach as well so we know for these three things better to give up your life yet we know there's a Gemara in Sota and other, play, and other places we learn out from different stories in Tanakh that better for one to jump into a fiery furnace than to shame someone publicly it's a very serious offense of how Malbim Pnei Chavero Berabim you shame someone publicly Engel Cheok Olam Haba it's very um, it's a very serious crime and in fact we know the famous story it's one not so famous with David but there's a famous one with Yehuda and Tamar the Yehuda even though no one would have known it was him who did the act with Tamar nevertheless better to we learn out from the incident better to throw yourself into a fiery furnace because she would have died if they were, they were going to kill her so it's better to um, we learn out better to be jump into a fiery furnace than it is to embarrass someone publicly so it seems to me there's a fourth one we said there are only three things you have to give up your life for for the Gemara it seems that you have to give up your life better not better not to embarrass someone publicly and give up your life so how come there aren't four things so that's what um, the Tosis writes and other right others write they're really they're, they're more than three there are four at least but the Gemara only counts those which are mafurish bekra, those which are explicit in the Pasuk 
those which are explicit in the Pasuk to those that are written, but it is true, we have to give up your life for, but it's not written as one because it's not explicit in the Chumash. It's not everyone agrees. So that's a discussion of halacha. We, today we live in a society where we embarrass people just for entertainment value. But, you know, but to not to embarrass them and to save, you know, to give up your own life for it. So whether we pass like that or not, that's a discussion. So those are the big three. So besides the big three, or perhaps four, there's a concept called Abizrayu. There's a, there's a, another category that something that might lead up to those things. So not only is a Yaro V'ayav, or let's say to commit adultery, but according to some, perhaps even the step before, secluding with the woman, you know, kissing, holding hands, whatever the preludes are, that could be also Yaro Gliel Yavor. That's a summary now to Abizrayu Da'arayis. And, you know, hugging and kissing. And others say by Avodah Zara, there's a halacha we know that you can't worship idols. But Abizrayu, the Avodah Zara is, I can't say I'm an ov- I can't say I have an Oved Avodah Zara. Let's say to save my life, I have to say I'm an idol worshiper. So there's a lach and shochan arach, one has to give up their life then to say. There are, that being said, the, the post can make a distinction between actually saying it and let's say having false documents and papers, etc., that, that um, imply it, but you don't actually say it. Like, it used to have on different documents, RK, referring to, you know, your, your follower of Catholicism. But, you know, maybe RK means Rosh Kolel. Or maybe RK means something else, Rabbi Kamenetsky. But whatever it might stand for, so it's not, it's not anything um, explicit. So we see even there's something about the power of words, that words directly, it's also to say, I am an idol worshiper, but you like to do things, you can put on priest clothes, you can do other things more indirect. Interesting enough, let's say it was the time of the Nazis, someone said, if the Nazi came over and said, you, know, you had blonde hair or blue eyes, are you Jewish? And could you say, no, you're not Jewish? So the answer in that case is yes, because that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a theological thing, that belief in God. The Nazis didn't care if you believed in God or not. It was a blood thing. They cared if your mother, your father, your grandparents, they were Jewish. So, so if I say I'm not Jewish, I'm not saying anything about my religion, I'm just... I'm just telling them, and they're just, they're just looking for the physical destruction. So either way, so there's, a, there's a concept of Ab Israel. The preludes are either it's hugging and kissing, perhaps that's Yarog Al Yavor, perhaps saying, I am an old day of Odeh Zara is, is Yarog Al Yavor. But how could you have Ab Israel by murder? Either you can't be a little bit dead, like we know you can't be a little bit pregnant either. So what does it mean? How could you have an Abizrayu by Ritzicha, by murders? Rabbi Yonah writes, you know how you could have it? Someone who embarrasses someone publicly is an Abizrayu de Ritzicha, a murder, and you have to give up your life for it. So, that's a, so we see that whether you actually have to give up your life for it or not, that's a discussion, but it's up there even with the big three. Which leads with Shlomo Zalman and the with Shlomo Zalman Arabach and the Mincha Shlomo is he discusses the issue can a Malbim Pene Chavero can embarrassing if someone puts a gun to you and says embarrass someone publicly or I'll kill you is it something you have to give up your life for so he goes he has a whole lengthy discussion on it it says Sarahi and it needs a it needs more thought so. One of the questions of Shlomo Zalman asks as, far, as follows, he says, if it, if embarrassing someone is Yaro al Yavo, you have to give up your life before you embarrass someone, so if that's the key, we all know you could desecrate the Shabbos to save someone's life. So if embarrassing someone publicly is the equivalent, you have to give up your life for it, so if you can machal Shabbos to save someone's life, I should be able to machal Shabbos to save someone from bizayon. Let me drive in my car and save someone who's about to be embarrassed. And 
We should say that, but I've never seen it. But we, we never seen someone. We never seen someone in Machal Shabbos in order to prevent someone from bizayon. So that's one question of Shomos. Now, if Yarog Yavor is, if Mal Ben Pedei Chaveru Lerav is embarrassing someone publicly, is something to give up your life for? We haven't seen it. We don't see. We know you're allowed on Machal Shabbos to prevent bizayon. We know you're allowed on Machal Shabbos to save a life. But we don't find it to prevent present Pizaya, and why not? And similarly, he writes, let's say someone's drowning. We all know you go in and save a life. What happens if you're getting ready for a wedding? It's your kid's wedding. You're wearing your tuxedo, a black tie, and you're about to walk in down the chuppah, and all of a sudden someone's drowning in the pool. It's one of those halls. And so do I have to jump in? And um, do I have to... If Pizaya is worse than death, if embarrassing someone is worse than death, so you, you shouldn't have to, because I'll be embarrassed when I walk down the aisle. But Shoma Koga writes, you don't have to invite yourself to save another life, but it's difficult to say that you wouldn't have to jump into a pool and embarrass yourself walking with your drenched clothes down the chuppah to save a life. We think yes, yet if Bizayon is worse than, if Bizayon is worse than death, so then Maybe um, maybe you shouldn't have to. So that's two kashas Rosh Shomel Zalman has. If you could mechal Shabbos to save someone's life, why not mechal Shabbos to save someone from bizayon, from disgrace? And if you could mechal Shabbos to, um, and if bizayon is worse than death, so then I shouldn't have to I shouldn't have to jump into the pool and save someone, but I'm embarrassed myself. So we'll have to see. So, um, and we know both seem not to be true, so how do we answer it? So that, we have to go back. The discussion we began with is, what is worse? To shame someone or to pain, cause someone pain? Shame or pain, as they say. In fact, the Or Sameach, as well as Rabbi Chan and Wasserman and other Akronim all point out the following contradiction. There's a Gemara and Baba Basra, Daf Tes. The Gemara says someone comes to your door. Actually, two people come to your door. And one is starving. Let's assume it's not life threatening, but they're in pain. They're starving. And you have, they ask for food. And at the same time, someone who's with them is asking for clothes. They're naked. So as the Gemara says, is Sar HaGuf? Do we go by the pain of the body, because it's pain when your hunger is a pain, or boshes adif, or the embarrassment is worse. In other words, what do you do? Do you feed the hungry or clothe the naked? What comes first? So in Shochan Arach, the Shochan Arach Paskins, you feed the hungry first, and then you clothe the naked. So we see from this Gemara that you feed the hungry so what's worse, shame or pain? Uh, pain. Right, apparently pain seems to be worse because you give to the person who's in pain, the hungry person, and, and not the person who doesn't have any clothes on. Okay, so we have one Gemara that says, seems to say pain is worse. However, there's a Gemara in Sanhedrin, the sixth parak of Sanhedrin. The Gemara is talking about actually interesting we have to We know the midst of loving. So the Gemara talks about it even when you're killing someone. Baralo misa yafe. You try to kill the person the most appropriate way, the most pain, painless way. So the Gemara has a shaila. A woman's being stoned. So now you have two options. You could, if you, you could stone her naked, and she'll die quicker, but she'll be embarrassed lying there naked. Or you could stone her with clothes on. She's going to suffer more because it's going, take, it's going to take longer to die. But however, she won't be shamed in public. So what do you do? Is it better to stone the woman naked so she dies quicker and no sh- and, but, but shame? Or better to stone her with clothes on so sh- she dies more painful but there's no shame? The first one. 
because if pain is, is worse than shame, then, uh, then it's better to stone her naked. Exactly, if that was true. However, we Paskin, that you, quote, you stone her with clothes on. So what do we see from this Gemara? What's worse, shame or pain? Shame. Yeah, so we have two Gemaras. The Gemara in Baba Basra Daftes tells me pain is worse. You feed the hungry versus clothing the naked. However, the Gemara in Sanhedrin, Memhe says, that you stone her with clothes on because apparently shame is worse than pain. So, Mr. Before we answer the question or attempt to answer it, what's the practical difference? Like, either way, we don't want to cause shame to someone, we don't want to cause pain. Is there enough kamina lahalacha besides stoning her naked or feeding the hungry? So the Chavez Yar points out that, number one, he, he wants to say that really there is no rule every case has to be taken differently. Maybe the case over there, he didn't have, he only had some clothes on, they were tattered, but not that he was completely naked. But if he was completely naked, maybe we would give. So he says you can't, he says you can't bring any rules. Every case, you have to know the details and then you have to figure out the details and make a decision. But the other way, the Chavis just says the following case. Let's say a Kohen it goes through, an, you know, he's walking through an apartment building and in the backyard there's a yard. And the only way to get back out is you have to walk through the apartment. So what's the problem? Well, it's Shabbos. And someone, while the coin is in the backyard, someone dies. And you all know that luck is, a coin is not permitted to come in contact with the dead. So being in the same room, that's a biblical prohibition. According to many Akronim, being in the same house but different room is only a drabanan. So, so to walk out of the door, you'd have to violate a rabbinical prohibition. However, on the other hand, he's stuck outside, he's freezing. So, um, you know, because it's very cold outside. So if he's outside and the only way to go in is to violate an isa drabanan, can he, can he violate the rabbinical prohibition of coming and being in the same ohel, the same building as a mace, to alleviate the pain? So we already know that the makam covered habriyas in order to avoid shame, you're allowed to violate an issa drabanan. You could violate a rabbinical prohibition in order to save someone from pain. So, if pain is worse than shame, so then you, so then you could also violate an etzadrabanan to alleviate someone from pain. But if pain is worse than shame, if but if shame is worse than pain, so then maybe you wouldn't know. So then. You, we wouldn't have a raya. So that's the question. So, as I said, the Chavez Yah says there is no principle, it depends on the facts. Others suggest Rav Ochanan or Sameach, they give their own answers. There's an interesting answer from Rav Hutner in the Pachad Yitzchak. He writes as follows. He says that, a, that we know pain is always something which is physical. When we talk about pain, we're talking about physical pain. And when we talk about shame, we're talking about spiritually, the nefesh of a person. We're talking about the urida, when lowering the dignity of a person. When someone embarrasses you, they cause you shame, they lower your dignity. And you know, that's why certain times, you know, if you, if you embarrass someone who's sleeping, they don't feel any shame because they don't even hear it. And sometimes it's better to hit your kid than to cause them pain. You're lowering their dignity. So there are two, so the Rafunner explains there's two different things here. There's a, there's a big difference between someone embarrasses you versus you embarrass yourself. When someone embarrasses you, 
they lower the tselem elokim, they lower the human dignity in you. If you embarrass yourself, that's something else. Let's say um, someone was, let's say, was home with his wife, and he said, you know, and he just dropped the dishes all over there for her. He says, oh, what a shlomazah, what a shlomil I am. And then, okay, then an hour later, he hears his wife talking to her mother, his mother-in-law, and she's saying to him, you know what a, what a shlomazah, what a shlomil my husband is. Then you say to her, I'm very upset. Why did you tell your mother-in-law? She said, what do you mean? You said it about yourself. You said it. I'm just repeating what... Yeah, but it's different. When I say it about myself is one thing. When someone else says it about you, it's different. You know, and that's why different, different slang words use, let's say, about describing different type of people. So some people, they use it about themselves, let's say, all the time, and they're not offended. But, when some, but if a white person uses it, it might be offensive. So it's different when someone else says it to you versus when, let's say, you say it yourself. So, when you, so let's say, for instance, when you're sitting on the butcher shop, I mean the dentist chair, and they're drilling and they're putting in the, all the, all the, they're fixing your gums and all that, and you're in a lot of pain. Does it hurt more when it's happening? Or when you think about an hour later, are you in more pain then? Assuming it's not worse, the assumption is the pain was much worse then, assuming, you know, the pain isn't really worse now. And you, know, and you can even laugh about it, because it's just bad, the pain at the time. But someone embarrasses you, sometimes you can get so worked up a day later, you feel worse now than you did when it happened, because you feel your dignity lowered. So Rav, so Rav Hutner says as follows, when we have an apparent contradiction. The Gemara and Baba Basra said you feed the hungry before you close the naked, implying pain is worse than shame. So when is pain worse than shame? That's when you're causing your own shame. No one embarrassed this guy. This guy embarrassed himself. In other words, he's walking around without clothes on. So when you embarrass yourself, that's not the same level, lower, lowered level of dignity, and hence pain is worse. But in the case of the woman being stoned, you're shaming her. If someone else is shaming you, then shame is worse than pain. And that's the difference. Pain is worse than shame. If the shame is self-inflicted, then pain is worse. But if you're being embarrassed by someone else, so then the shame is worse. And that is perhaps this we can interrupt with Shlomo Zalman's question. Rosh Shlomo Zalman said, if we see that barabim is yarog yavor. It's a very serious offense to embarrass someone publicly. So just like we know you could be machal Shabbos to save someone's life, so why can't I be machal Shabbos to save someone from bizayun? The answer is this: not in the case where he brought the bizayun onto himself. If he fell into the mud, he fell into a mud pot. I don't have to ride on Shabbos and give him and give him drive over and give him a suit. He did it to himself, or. If I jump into the pool with my tuxedo on to save, besides, that's not a bizarre anyway, saving a life. But if I jumped in, so no one's embarrassed to me, I embarrass myself. So then we say it's not the same. Pain is worse, and therefore, you, of course you jump, of course, um, of course you jump into the pool and, and embarrass yourself because you're embarrassing yourself, someone else isn't doing. And that's the Yisod, that pain versus shame, as the Chavez Yar says, it depends also, there is no rule. It depends on, he's talking, maybe the person isn't totally naked or not, or, and, and, Rav, and Rav Hudner explains along similar lines, but in a more physical versus spiritual, it depends on who's causing the shame. If you shame yourself, you fall on a banana, okay, so it's a little funny, you can laugh at yourself, but if someone plants a banana and everyone's laughing at you, that's a totally different shame. So those, those are the different aspects we discuss in a positive way. What's a better mitzvah to do in a priority? Let's say, honoring, covering the mourner or visiting the sick. And today we focused on the lesser of two evils. It is what's worse, pain or shame? And that's a discussion we have with, you know, within, in the Gemaras in Baba Basra and Sanhedrin and the way we reconcile.